Okay, so today we're going to do the final element for this uh, spar web. So this is the flanges, flanges, this is your scantilever, and this is the web, the panel. And on the previous uh, video or lecture, we studied that we have two different cases. First one is when we assume just the panel, just to carry shear, and the option two will be that this panel can shear, uh, can um, sustain shear, but also some of the bending moment due to this force over here. Okay, so how do we do the modeling? So these two different type of elements. So let me go to this page. So basically for the FEMAP Nastran, case one, web does not carry any bending stress. Then we need to do the modeling of the web or the panel using shear element and the flanges with rod elements. Okay. For case two, where we have the assumption now that the web or panel can carry bending stresses, we need to select an element that can carry bending stresses, and that would be to select a plate element. Okay, and for the flanges, it will be the same thing. The problem here is that one of the output given by the problem is not shear, but we know by definition that shear is what is shear stress times the thickness. Okay. So basically, in order to get the shear flow from the shear stress, you need to multiply the shear stress by the thickness of the panel. That's what I'm saying over here. All right, so let's get started. If we go back over here, we see this is, this work in millimeters of 400, 200, and that would be 2,000. So it looks like we need to create one, two, three, four points. Okay. So let me start here, FEMAP. All right, so let's see, geometry points. So we can do, let's say, minus 200 200 and then at 2000 minus 100 and here would be 100 all right, control A to center the point, so that looks about correct. So now we need to create the shear panel over here. So let's do geometry, surface, corners, method on point. You select one point at a time. Okay, there we go. Cancel, so that's basically the geometry. So let's save this file, save us. Uh, all right, I'm using this Nastran. So this would be new folder, let's say Nastran 5. Here we go. And let's call this one model zero. I like to save on the way, that way if you need to you don't need to restart from zero. Okay, so on the example, if I remember right, we did for case two, okay? So that means that in this video, we're gonna use plate elements and rod elements. So let's go to model, material. Let's use, let's say it's 2024, so 75 to the 9.3. So this is basically, that would be like aluminum 2024, but it doesn't matter because we don't calculate here displacements or rotation, so really the material is not important. You can put anything you want, you can put one. Okay, cancel. So model, property, double click to make it active, property, right click new. So this is the plate element already. So let's see what's the thickness two millimeters. So I work in everything in millimeters. So this will be the average two millimeters. So let's say plate T 
equals to millimeters. And okay, cancel. So next thing we can do now is uh, create the other property. New element property, we need the rod. So here for simplicity, I'm just gonna put one. And okay. Oops, no, we had a We have an area for those booms. So I think that he won't go to the road element. Sorry for that. I think we are here 400. So, all right. So let me go back here. You can right click, edit, and change this one by 400 millimeter square. Okay. All right. So now we can go and do the meshing. So let's say mesh, mesh control size on surface. So problem is here. If we do 10, would that be a lot? Would be 200, would be 20 and 10. Too much. Okay, so let's say 50. Okay, that's still a lot, but I can live with it. Why is it so small over here? Now let's try 100. Really doesn't matter, I mean, you can go and refine later on. Alright, let's do. I mean, let's see how it looks and we'll see what happens. So mesh geometry surface, okay, quad with plate elements. It looks okay. So there we go, if you want here, then we can go to a mesh geometry curve. And we can mesh this one, this one, this one, really, you don't have to do this one, but if you want, you could do this one. All right, with the, uh, road property, that's correct. Okay, tools, check, coincident nodes, select all, okay. Review should be all the edges done. Okay, so now we need to go to model constraint. You can do not all or on curve. Let's do on curve. So we know this is clamp or fix. Clamp or fix over here. Okay. Okay. All right. Now we can need to apply the load over there. I mean, I would like to create a spider web and connect it over here, but uh, for this case, just for simplicity, let's just apply the load here and here in the middle. But personally, I would like to see all four elements to be deformed the same way. So model, load, not all. Let's just do this one. So this is the F equal to 20 kilonewtons. Okay, so let's select this one. It would be better if we just combine all this one into one node over here, but should not be that bad. Minus 20 exponential three. And, okay, and click here now, cancel. So you don't have to do this, file, rebuild, yes, 
file, save us. Model one, save. Okay, so in this problem here, let's see if I remember right, we need to calculate here the section of one. So one is right in the middle. <clears throat> we could do this later on, but. Uh, so tools, work plan, say draw yes for now. This is 1000. Let me just create a group here, new. Let's say here, section AA at 1000 millimeters. Okay, so now this one should be active group elements ID and basically it will be an average but we need to take these ones basically here okay so the more you refine the mesh better the result will be but as a first run let's just do this one here and okay because we need to check the values over here okay and I think that's it. We can go now and run the analysis. You can just go to the loaded gear on top. Create new. This is static static analysis. Okay. And analyze. Hopefully we're not gonna have any error. Okay, so here we go. So let's remove now this work plane. Okay. And let's see what happened with the values. All right, so if we look at this section, so F5, let's do contour, deform, and let's look at the shear. So this is bottom should be top. It doesn't matter which one you use. Top, X, Y, shear, stress. Okay. Okay. So you see here if we combine, probably it would be better, but since we're doing here the calculation, I think it should not affect much the result. But if we were really seeing what would be the shear here, the way you apply the load, we probably may have some uh, effect. So let's see what happened at the cut. Right click, show active group. And you see you have about 25.49, which is not really the result that we had, which is, I mean, basically should be if you multiply this by the thickness, it should be about that. So let's see what we had. You see about 50 to be the maximum value and this because the web can resist the, a bending is not constant. So it should not, it should be like some type of distribution. Okay. So you can see it here is not constant. This is this, but if you do F5, and look at the criteria, they should give you more of the values. All right. So it would be about 40, this would be about 50, so this is 39. This will show the distribution like being like this, no? Like from here, here is kind of constant, and then it will be something like this. Okay, so we need now to see how we can do to multiply the output by two. So let's see how to do this. So I think it's model, output, process uh, here linear combination and we're going to multiply by factor of 2 and now we need to set select the output process 
So it will be this one. But I don't want the whole output process. I would just be like to be able to select the plate shear. So let's see. Okay, let's see, let's see what happens. Okay, where are the output set? Okay, so this looks like it's gonna multiply everything. Let me do a reset here. One more. Oh, there we go. This is what I wanted. So play top X, Y shear. So just this one for now, because really the displacement should not be multiplied by two, just the shear flow. I want to do this one. Okay. And click. Okay. And now let's see if one results. All results, so you have the combined, it should be this one. Hmm. Let me go to groups. Okay. So let's try to see what happens here. So let's go to F5. Form, let's see, contour, data, deform our contour data. All right, so I'm not sure here what's happening. Okay, so this was multiplied by two, and let's see at the cut. All right, there we go. So at the cut now you see it's about, this is 51 or 50 over here, and it goes to the blue. If you want, we can do this for criteria. So basically now this should compare to this one over here. So about 40, 50, and we should see the low distribution, okay? And this is what we had for this problem. Yeah, that's the last. Uh, that's the last uh, page. Okay, so that's basically the final element for this. Okay, so I will stop the video, and uh, then on the following video will be very similar to this one. I will just do one for uh, case one after we do the analytical solution. So I'm going to stop the video over here. Let me see if I can close this. Come over here.